the sea, covers over two-thirds of our planet's surface. Yet we know more about space and the universe than we do about our own oceans. Scuba diving allows us to peel back the blue veil that obstructs our eyes from all the magnificent things that lurk below. and rest beneath the sea. We invite you to join us as we travel and explore all that lies beneath. Hello everybody, this is Captain Dennis of Squall Marine Divers. We're up off a of Block Island today in Rhode Island, and we're going to be diving a piece of world history today, the wreck of the U-853. The U-853 was a German U-boat, sank here in May of 1945, after sinking the Black Point. This is a very well-known site in the Northeast, and you can see in a few short minutes why. As we get down closer to the sub, we're going to be tied into the bow section a little bit after the bow. It's very interesting to be able to come down here and see a piece of World War II history. The depth here is about 125 feet to the sand. It's about 115, 113 to the, the hull of the ship. You can see that the outer hull is, is really non-existent in some spots. But the fact that she's still here and still together is a testament to the engineering. So we're going to start to move a little bit forward to go take a look at the bow. So here we are at the very tip of the bow. And now we're gonna move aft and uh, we're limited with some of the time we have here. So we're gonna see how far we can explore this ship. So we're just a little bit after the bow, and it looks like these might be air flasks. I'm gonna keep moving aft, and you can see in the center it's like a cylindrical shape. As we come around here, this is the forward torpedo loading hatch. This is where they used to put the torpedoes in the sub, and then stow them to be launched later now we're not going to do any penetration but we are going to kind of look in here with the light and the camera really don't want to disturb anything because there are uh, human remains in here of uh, german sailors so we're just gonna stay on the outside out of respect for the guys on the inside so as we move further aft we come across the battery access hatch Lower the camera down in there. All kinds of debris on the bottom there. And we're gonna keep moving backwards. And we're gonna come across the forward personnel access hatch. These are some tight quarters, folks. And really see just how cramped it was in there. Now 
Now here we are, the damage hole just forward of the conning tower. And this is uh, where the cruise quarters was. And as we look in here, you can kind of see over there across, it looks like, I don't know if that was a hatchway where people would go in and out, but really, really tight quarters for these guys. Now here we are at the most recognizable feature on the sub, the conning tower. As we get up to the top, we're going to look down this hatch. On the left-hand side, it looks like a, it's part of the periscope. There's another really tight access to get in here. These guys couldn't have been very big. And you can see on the right, it looks like these are controls or instruments. So there you can see the periscope in the distance. We're going to go take a closer look at that also. Now here we are at the periscope. What was really interesting to me was how shiny the periscope was. If I'm not mistaken, it's made out of stainless steel, and that looks like it went down yesterday. Now we're just after the conning tower and these, these large looks like tanks. I guess this was the uh, ventilation system for when they were operating in shallow water to get fresh air into the sub. Now we're going to descend a little bit down to the hull again. So we'll take a final look at the conning tower as we continue moving aft. Now, as we look down from the conning tower, you can see all these pieces of machinery. This wouldn't have been visible because the, the hull would have been over it. Those cylinders are air flasks. Here we have the aft personnel access hatch. And that big structure in the middle of your screen is the mount for the anti-aircraft gun on the aft end of the sub. According to our dive computer, it's time for us to start making our way back to the ascent line. So we'll have to come back at another time to explore the stern section of the ship. So as we move forward and take our last look at the shell of the 853, I'd just like to mention that no one on this ship was over 30 years old. I think the oldest serving crew member was 29 and the youngest was 18, with the median age being 20 years old, 19 years old. It really puts into perspective just how young the sailors were on this ship. Hopefully, we've learned our lesson from World Wars and we won't have to go through them ever again. So as we get to the tie-in, we're going to disconnect and make our way back up to the boat. One final look from up top at the bow of the U-853. A couple other divers coming up underneath us. Oh, look, Boyle's Law. So here's uh, Jason making his way back up to the top, followed by his dive buddy, Stefan. 
These are some pretty cool tropical fish that came to say hello. I've never seen them before. And they wouldn't leave me alone. They just kept hanging out with us on the line. I guess they were just as interested as us as we were them. Keeping us comfy on our safety stop. And if you're curious, these are banded rudder fish. We hope you found today's dive as interesting as we did. We encourage you to do some research on local U-boats. There's a lot of them that came quite close to the American shores. If you're interested in exploring more shipwrecks with us, check us out at squallsmarine.com. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of the future action. We'd like to thank Captain Wayne Gordon and his boat, the Candy Air, for taking us out today. Until next time, I'm Captain Dennis.